London, an interpretation of current world politics as presented by the activist, writer and historian Tariq Ali. The emergence of the United States as a global empire. The world today, only on telesultv.net in English. Wherever the news, you'll be there. For Telesur, I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas. Israel continued to pound Gaza today, pushing the number of Palestinian fatalities to over 1,050. Here's the latest from the ground in Gaza. Civilian areas continue to be attacked. Gaza's main hospital, Es Shifa, was targeted Monday, whilst the park where children were playing was also shelled. At least 10 children were killed on Monday. Our small kids were playing on a swing. Suddenly, a rocket struck them. They were ripped apart, their body parts strewn on the ground. Five members of the same family, all dead, including my cousin. From the crime near the beach, Al Shifa received 10 dead, 8 kids and 2 grown-ups, in addition to 40 injuries, mostly children. So far, Israel has destroyed at least 18 health centers and 85 schools, which are often sheltering civilians. The UN said on Monday at least 200,000 Gazans have been displaced. However, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said the conflict can only be ended when Hamas is disarmed. The United Nations continues to push for an end to the Israeli attack. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has reiterated yesterday's call by the Security Council for an immediate ceasefire. Uh, let me begin by reinforcing last night's call of the Security Council, uh, calling for an immediate, unconditional humanitarian uh, ceasefire. As you know, I issued a statement yesterday calling for a 24-hour extension of the humanitarian ceasefire, and I did the same uh, this morning, early this morning. As the world marks Yid al fit it is time for an immediate, unconditional humanitarian ceasefire. In the name of humanity, the violence must stop. To Latin America, today Venezuelans observed what would have been the 60th birthday of late President Hugo Chavez. Before his death last year, Chavez was elected four times as president. Today, celebrations of his life began in the capital Caracas with fireworks at the final resting place of the former president and a festival with traditional Venezuelan music. In his hometown of Barinas, neighbors celebrated through dance. The biggest answer is the commitment we must assume every day to keep building this homeland. The U.S. and E.U. agreed today on broader sanctions against Russia over the Ukraine crisis. Speaking in Poland, British Foreign Minister Philip Hammond said more sanctions will follow if Russia continues to support separatist forces in eastern Ukraine. Meanwhile, NATO military buildup in eastern Europe continued. On Monday, the U.K. announced over 1,300 troops will participate in NATO military exercises in Poland. from veteran... Russia, which denies aiding the rebels, responded to the new sanctions, saying the measures could actually strengthen the country. We are not happy about these sanctions. European countries have imposed these sanctions, we know. But I can assure you that we will overcome difficulties in certain areas that will arise in our economy. Maybe we will become more self-sufficient. The foreign ministers of Mercosur met today to approve the agenda for the heads of state meeting scheduled for tomorrow here in Caracas. The meeting was chaired by the Venezuelan foreign minister, Elias Hagua, who highlighted the regional trade and the potential of the economic bloc. The continent's largest economies, Argentina and Brazil, also outlined their vision for the alliance. Tomorrow's meeting of the presidents in Caracas will discuss a number of key ways to expand the trade bloc. It's expected that Mercosur will expand its economic relations with the creation of an economic zone that will see ALBA, the Bolivarian alliance of our peoples, and Petrocaribe join up with Mercosur. Brazil has announced that it will try to advance Mercosur's efforts to achieve a free trade agreement between the European Union and Mercosur. Following the summit, the presidency of Mercosur will be transferred to Argentina. Mexico's water situation continues to worsen as residents there face a variety of troubles with their We go to our correspondent in Mexico, Clayton Kahn. 
The cry of water is a common sound in Mexico City's working class neighborhoods. Vendors sell the basic necessity to those who regularly suffer, what they call water blackouts. When there is no water, what we do is reuse it. One time we were completely out of water, and when it rained, we would fill buckets to use for the bathroom. We would use it there or for the other things in the house, and to wash dishes. It was from water delivered by a truck, or we would ration the water. One fifth of the aquifers in Mexico are severely exploited, forcing residents to rely upon imported and expensive bottled water. However, some local entrepreneurs have turned to selling cheap purified water as a response. It's a fundamental right, and the access to water is a necessity, so these small-scale purifiers are a possible solution. Experts warn the crisis will deepen if outdated infrastructure is not replaced, and if there is not a concerted effort to reverse a culture of overconsumption. Critics also say an unregulated real estate boom and major development projects are threatening access to this vital resource. Clayton Khan, Telesur, Mexico City. Bolivian President Evo Morales will glide to re-election with 59% of the vote. That's according to a new poll released today. The Ipsos poll gives the president his biggest lead so far ahead of the October 12th presidential election. It is the first poll showing Morales with more than 50% of the vote, which would guarantee him another five years in office. His nearest rival, Samuel Doria Medina, trailed Morales with 18% of the vote in the poll. That's a whopping 41 points behind the current president. Following the two front one, front runners are the Christian Democratic Party's Jorge Quiroga and the movement without fears Juan del Granado, both polling 4% of the vote. A huge full fuel depot, depot in Libya's capital burned out of control today following fighting between rival militias. The depot contained 6 million gallons of fuel threatening an environmental disaster. The government has requested a ceasefire to control the blaze. Meanwhile, a further sign that the country is slipping into chaos, various governments plan to evacuate their diplomatic staff. The U.S. evacuated its embassy over the weekend. Today marks the 100th anniversary of the First World War. The war is considered the first modern war involving destructive weaponry such as tanks and chemical gases. The war left nearly 7 million civilian fatalities and over 16 million military deaths. Although, although it focused on Europe, former European colonies suffered immensely and the war led to the carve-up of the Middle East. More on those stories and more at our website, telesurtv.net slash English. Go check it out. For Telesur English, I'm Cody Waddle. Tus esteros hay un pedazo de mi alma, en cada punta de monte hay una copla grabada, en cada estero hay un verso y un pasaje en tus cañadas. ¡Que viva Marina! Viviré, te lo juro que viviré.